Good afternoon. I'm still reporting on the coup. Legal thought going into today's Trump Colorado case before the U.S. Supreme Court is near unanimity that Trump will win this easily. The only debate is by what margin. During oral arguments, leftists on the court seem to be focusing on minor issues, perhaps in an attempt to divert attention from the main problem the profound damage this would cause to our constitutional system of elected governance by a vote of the citizens of the United States in an orderly, fair, and transparent manner. Any divergence from these just principles would render elections at all levels of self-governance a perpetual mire of candidates locked in mortal lawfare combat both before and after every election, just exactly what all enemies of the United States desire. Here are three arguments from the Newsmax coverage. The self-execution issue is interesting, but ultimately leads to the ultimate issue, which is who has the authority to take a a person off the ballot? The answer is no one. Uh, The issue is that the Congress is the only one that can decide to remove somebody, not from the ballot, but from the office itself after he's already elected. As Justice, I believe, Thomas said, this is going to be, it's an issue of of precluding somebody not running from office, but from holding office. Mm. That's the big issue here, and it will be reversed, this decision. Well, this is a legal argument, not a factual one. That's important. So you notice that there isn't a lot of talk about what went on on January 6th. There are two legal hurdles that they are not going to be able to overcome those who want to throw him off the ballot. The first one is that Congress is the one that enforces this. Just look at Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. It says Congress shall address this. The second hurdle that's brutally difficult for them is that the prohibition is against holding office, as you heard, Sean and Emma, not running for office. And the reason that's so manifestly obvious is that Congress can lift the disability. Somebody can get elected president who's engaged in insurrection, we'll just assume that for the sake of argument, uh, and Congress can lift it. So it's premature, you can't do it now, and it's Congress that does this. And by the way, look at the political hypocrisy on abortion. You can't leave that to the states, that's outrageous. But here, you must leave this to the states. It's really comical, honestly. Yes. Uh, Joe, what stands out to you in maybe the line of questioning that we've seen from the justices when it comes to Colorado's defense? Yeah, hi, Emma. Well, I think I think Jason Barbie is doing the best with what he has, but I think the skeptical questions show exactly where this case is going. And, and I agree. I think what we heard from Chief Justice Roberts about 15 minutes ago, I think really encapsulated. He, you know, to the point, Congress has the power to enforce the 14th Amendment through legislation. The fact is that following enactment of the 14th Amendment, Congress passed a law criminalizing insurrection. Donald Trump has not been charged with that law, nor have the 1,200 or so individuals involved in January 6th. So the idea that you would say, okay, let's ignore all that. Let 50 states come up with 50 different definitions of what insurrection means and 50 different ways of determining whether someone has, in fact, committed insurrection, it it would be absolute chaos. I mean, look at Colorado had a civil trial. Look at in Maine, the Secretary of State didn't even have a trial. She just declared it on her own. And so I think the justices are looking at this very skeptically and saying, there's no way this process could work the way Mr. Murray's proposing it. And he's kind of taking this position like, well, you know insurrection when you see it. That doesn't work. Yeah. Our top academic legal experts have not been hesitant to voice their opinions forcefully and concisely, including one of the members of the Colorado Supreme Court, Justice Carlos Samor. The decision to bar former President Donald J. Trump from Colorado's presidential primary ballot flies in the face of the due process doctrine. Jonathan Turley, professor at George Washington University School of Law, says, I think that it's unfounded both constitutionally and historically. I also think it's perhaps the most dangerous legal theory to come up in years. Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus, says, 
the decision by the all-Democrat Supreme Court of Colorado to remove Donald Trump from the ballot is among the most undemocratic and unconstitutional rulings that I have ever read in my 60 years of teaching and practicing law. Lawrence Lessig, professor at Harvard Law School, says Section 3 cannot police a contest over an election. The Supremes have announced that their decision is so important that it will be released later today. I'm still reporting from just outside the one-time center of world freedom. Good day.